Welcome everyone to this video presentation titled History of the Christian Church Part 1. This is a video series you truly do not want to miss showing you the entire history of the Christian Church from the days of Jesus Christ down to the end of time. The history of the Christian Church from the days of Jesus' first coming down to his second coming. Now we're going to pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with. As we come before you, first of all, Lord, we just want to ask that you forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Please send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Give us understanding as we read these verses one by one. Please send your holy angels to be with us, protect and guide us. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's go to the following verses found in Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth the man-child, who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now we're going to go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Question. Can a woman be literally clothed with the sun and stand on the moon? Answer. No. One of the rules when studying the Bible is, if it does harm to the laws of nature, then it is to be understood symbolically or figuratively and not literally. So we see this woman being wrapped in the sun. We know According to the laws of nature, that's an impossibility she would burn up. So we're to realize this is figurative. And we're going to go into the Bible and find out what does this exactly mean. Now we're going to look at some verses. Let's first go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Very last book of the Bible. Revelation 1 verse 1 says the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John now you can pause it here and go to the verse and read it for yourself but if you notice this book is the revelation of Jesus Christ God gave it to Jesus to show us things that would come to pass shortly and Jesus signified it that word signified means to give into signs and symbols so the first four letters of signified is sign and then he gave it to his angel and to give unto John to give to us in Hosea chapter 12 verse 10 Hosea is right after the book of Daniel in the Old Testament Hosea chapter 12 10 we are told I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets so God uses similitudes when he speaks to through the prophets 
And what is a similitude? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. It's the fifth book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The last book written by Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 16 to 17 to find out what are these similitudes that God uses when he gives visions to his prophets. Verse 16, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, 17, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, and verse 18, it says, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. So it's, it's an image. It's a picture. It's a, an image of something, whether it is human, whether it is a plant, whether it is animal-like. Um, and they can be figurative as well. But it's something, a picture that John sees when he's looking up. Now, Revelation 1-3, let's go back there. Let's see what we're counseled regarding this verse. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth. So there is a blessing in reading this particular book of the Bible called Revelation. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Brothers and sisters, don't let anyone tell you that the book of Revelation cannot be understood. It most definitely so can be. However, a large portion of it is figurative. But we're going to be learning as we learn the history of the Christian church, we're going to be learning what these figures represent. Revelation 22.10, last chapter of the Bible last chapter of the last book of the Bible tells us and he saith unto me seal not the sayings of the prophecy of the of this book for the time is at hand brothers and sisters don't let people tell you that this book is sealed that you cannot understand it God said the time is at hand and you're going to receive a blessing when you read it first a lot of people just want to listen to cassettes or audio you're supposed to pick it up and read it. And don't read it on an electronic. Get a physical Bible. If you don't have one, go buy one. Medical science has shown that you retain 20 times more by reading from a written page than you do reading from an electronic. Moving on. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 tells us Revelation 1, 9 and 10. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, and he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So, John is on the isle of Patmos. He is going through tribulation because he was a Christian standing for Jesus Christ. He was put on this desolate island, and while he was there, he was given a vision. Now, here is a painting, portrait of John on the Isle of Patmos. And this is known to be when he had his vision, when he's on the... Uh, sand of the sea now in the Bible it says he was standing this one has him kneeling but he was a prisoner on the Isle of Patmos let's keep going something to keep in mind about Revelation 12 the line of prophecy in which these symbols are found begins with Revelation 12 and that's from a book called Great Controversy page 438 paragraph 2 Back to Revelation 12.1. What does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? Question. What does a woman in Bible prophecy represent? If you go to Jeremiah 6.2, 2 Corinthians 11.2, and Ephesians 5.23, a woman in prophecy rep uh, represents a church. A virgin represents 
God's pure church, and a whore or harlot represents a corrupt church system, a corrupt church. So a woman represents a church in Bible prophecy. Only when you're dealing with prophecy. Now if it talks about Adam and Eve, it's talking about a literal woman. Remember, if it does harm to the laws of nature, then you're to take it figuratively and find what the meaning of the verse is. Continuing on. So a woman equals a church. Okay, so now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Revelation 17, 1 through 5 tells us, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, or come here. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations filthiness of her fornication so this woman or church is clothed in purple and scarlet color which is red that right there a lot of people are going to know who God is talking about so this is a church who is clothed in purple and red. She's a rich church. She carries a gold cup. And she's full of abominations. Okay? So, you think of any church that wears the colors red and purple, that's rich, the richest church in the world, that always has that golden cup in their hand? We'll keep reading to see what else God says. And upon her forehead was written a name, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So it's not literally written on her forehead. That's symbolical because it's a mystery. So you don't know who she is unless you read these verses in the Bible. But she's the mother of harlots. And a harlot is a corrupt church. So she is the mother church and she has lots of churches following her and the abominations that are in these churches stem from her a virgin in Bible prophecy is a pure church a whore in Bible prophecy is an impure corrupt church as I stated before in your own time please read the following verses and we will discuss these next time Isaiah 28, 7, John 10, 14 through 16, and Revelation 18, verses 2 through 4. Please read from the King James Version only, for all others have changed or omitted. Here are more rules for studying the Bible. Please be sure you look up each and every verse in your King James Bible so that you may be properly equipped to correctly understand the prophecies of the Bible. The end. Any questions? If so, please post in the comment section below this video. Until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. Bye-bye.